Are you just tan, naturally tan? No, I well, I am. I'm Italian, but You're I Italian. got a little spray tan because I have a gig. Because I had the gig last night. I I because I look, I think of my. We, I'm, my legs are pale, like pale. They're like see-through. Spray tan? Well, they're he's pa- gotten them before. They're pa- also, my girl's a mobile. She'll come to you. She's the best. We have one, but I like to keep them pale now because I know how much it bothers my wife. Like she's oh, like, just they're, they're, they're like they're like translucent. They're he's white. They're like, like I have I have a quarter Asian in me, so I can like tan and uh-huh. not you know look like him. But I'm not. I mean, that's no, not, your arms, but like in every, my face. Yeah, but everything else that's clothed. Are you Italian? No, I'm. We're, I'm Jewish. Jewish. She's half. Oh, my dad's. I'm Jewish and Italian. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Pizza bagel. Yeah. <laughs> pizza bagel. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how we're gonna start the show. Hey, it's Michaela. Welcome to So Funny It Hurts, where we interview your favorite comedians and explore the trauma that makes them that way. Now, I'm so excited for this week's episode. I have been hawking this guy in his DMs for like a month. And he's here, and he's with his son, and I'm so excited. Please welcome to the show, Josh and Jacob. Hi. 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 Now, I will tell you, it, I wanted to make sure that he could come, which is why this took of a little course. longer. Listen to me. I wanted to tell you that I don't know if you know this. One of the biggest episodes that we've done so far on So Funny It Hurts, um, I obviously started the podcast because I uh, have a lot of trauma and needed therapy, so I mm-hmm. started a podcast instead sounds right and so i uh i didn't have a relationship with my father for many years and we went to therapy reconnected and he was my get my big guest for father's day and we had an amazing episode awesome. and it was so wonderful and he's like my buddy i love him so much but when i saw the two of you i was so warm to the fact that you guys are so good to each other like i was obsessed with it so i love that you're here i always honor like the parent relationship so i'm so happy that you both could be here yeah thank you i, I made sure that i i drove in from disneyland this morning so i was like hey we gotta leave no a you didn't i was like i told my girlfriend i was like we gotta leave a couple hours early and she was like wow yeah gotta make a podcast uh, i was like just got told about it so we just gotta leave honestly at if i were at disneyland i would have been like sorry mick i'm not coming to your little podcast well, we, we planned on coming back today it was just i was like we went all day yesterday and and even the night before so i was like yeah we can we can just leave a little bit early but you love disneyland that's like you're happy i do it it, look it we used to play hooky as kids once a year with my mom he would he would always stay working but my mom would pull me and my sister out of school and we'd play hooky one day a year and we go to disneyland and that was just kind of our thing and then as we got older we just stopped doing it because high school and stopped caring about it a little more or, or sports or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, and but then you're back. You my, and your girlfriend my, love my it. girlfriend grew up in Anaheim, so she loves it. it. She used to have a pass in high school and her and her twin would just go after school. Listen and just go hang out. There's nothing I don't care what anybody says. This uh this past Christmas I always do Christmas with my niece and nephew. And we like do a thing. We don't have kids, so we like make it big for the kids. So we had a really long year last year, me and my fiance, and we're like, you know what? Let's just go to Disneyland for Christmas, me and you, vibe out. We did. It was the bomb. We had so we were like two little best. kids, and it was the best. Yeah. So you know what we used to? So when I was a single dad for a little while, which I love, by the way, it, you never see single dads. Kudos to you, my guy. Well, it wasn't on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like actually sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well played. We, I remember we. So the first time I went to Disneyland, we it was huge. We didn't have a whole lot of money, and I these lines were like crazy. And you would wait in line. I had three kids, right? I have three kids, so I would. You would wait in line, and halfway through the line, one of them would have to go to the bathroom. So you'd get out of line and go to the bathroom, and you'd get back in line, and then one of the other ones would have to go to the bathroom. And so you ended up getting the same oh line <laughs> like two or three times, which would drive me oh my fucking God. crazy. <laughs> so about midway through our first trip, the four of us, I turned because I saw somebody in a wheelchair go to the front of the line. And I said to the kids, I go, who wants to be handicapped? And they were like, what? I go, who wants to be handicapped today? And my daughter was like, me. I said, cool, we're going to get you a wheelchair. It's always the girl. She's like, I'll take one. Oh, she was, but she was a better actor than them. <laughs> She was 100%. a she. 100%. I knew she. She grew up to be a theater kid, like a hundred percent. And like, I knew that yeah, my oldest that. son would overplay it, and I wouldn't be able to keep. A, and I wouldn't be able to keep a straight face. That's the thing. I would laugh. He would laugh hundred percent. 
you could always tell when he was going to lie or trying to hide yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if you just looked at him for long enough, he would laugh. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I couldn't have him keep. No, the, he wasn't trustworthy. He just, he was, I, I was trustworthy. Happy. Yeah, I just, I just. Uh, yeah, we he, needed more. Yeah, no, I yeah, needed yeah, more. Yeah, so yeah. I knew my daughter would sink in and I would, I would say to her, you hurt your ankle. And by the way, the next time we went, I would buy a knee brace or would, a boot. For, I would buy a boot from CVS. Mm. I hope you guys are listening. To yeah. advice. <laughs> you can't do it anymore. <laughs> you can't, like, you can't I do it anymore. They, they've, they've really, they've really put down a doctor's down on note. It. Uh, to it's, give to maybe. Well, yeah, but you also know what I found out from my girlfriend is oh. that there was, you know, that fast pass thing that you always thought you yeah, had to I love buy. The fast yeah, pass. yeah, the fast passes used to be free. You just had to go get them printed out. So I just found that out, and now the fast pass. There's like a fast pass pass. It's called Genie Plus, and you have to get it on the Disney app, and then you so you can plan when you're oh going to go to know. certain things. But it's like twenty dollars a person to get it, and then there are certain rides that cost like an additional twenty five dollars per person to get into it. It's like. They're really trying to find every single way to take the money out of people, and people are for it. Yeah, the way, it's crazy. There's That's, a way around the wheelchair thing now. What is it? They're, so they're, because they're waiting they, for you. They started to crack down when we were going, but I was like, "Hey, she hurt her ankle in the park. I need a wheelchair." You scheme stress. Yo, That's... they don't look. They don't want any problems with somebody getting hurt in the park Your yeah mind it's is really interesting the most magical thing so i was ever. like you hey, literally said in the park here in the park do you want me should i talk to you or do i need to <laughs> i just need a wheelchair and they're like you you get a wheelchair listen that's brilliant oh Yo, yeah 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 listen a good dad a smart dad so what we're committing crimes those kids are going to disneyland i mean it's not like, illegal if you don't get caught it's is it a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's, just putting it out there. It's only a, it's you said it so quickly. You've rehearsed. I that. know, my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, it's funny. I, I, I said it How a lot. How many times have you said that? A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Growing up, like you know, we, I forgot. Oh, I, I just remembered Wait, something did, I wanted to tell did you. Did you just have a stroke? What I just, just remembered happened? something I wanted to tell Wait, you. It's so crazy to watch you guys too, because although we're very much like here, you guys have your own language. Like you guys vibe off of yes. each other so hard, and I think it's so great. Are you the oldest? or the youngest? youngest. The youngest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to talk quickly because did you already have the babies? Because you started um, doing the roundtable talks with Chelsea Handler. Yeah. And did you have the kids already at that point? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you were doing stand-up comedy while simultaneously raising the three babies? So... Young. We were young, young. Like So when I, when I first got to L.A., I would go to the comedy store... And either a guy named Joey Diaz would watch them um, at the apartment, or I would take, if Joey wasn't available, I would take them to the comedy store, and they weren't allowed in, but comics would come and sit in the car with them. I would do my set. Chelsea babysat the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, Ralphie May babysat oh the kids. And Joey Diaz babysat, but they would babysit them in the parking lot. Or if I went to the improv, I would just go for my set, right? So the wait staff would give them ice cream and we'd sit, you know, that out front of the improv? Yeah, totally. They would serve them some food or get us some ice cream. Uh, my oldest son at the time was seven. So every now and then they would let him intro me. That's awesome. Oh my I didn't God, know that. At the so improv, cute. yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. At the improv. And so, you know, you just do what you have to do. I, I, I love doing stand-up comedy. And I have always loved doing stand-up comedy. Yep. Okay, I want to talk about uh, Jacob doing stand-up comedy because I know he's like gotten into it. He's doing his own thing. But I want to start with you because you did a whole set, speaking of parents, I read this, that you started a whole set that was like about your parents' gas. And that's yeah. what like kicked off your stand-up comedy yeah. career. The which first you joke, were young, which is insane. I was 15. The first, That's crazy. first joke I ever told, my mom was in the front row, and I was 15. I, you want to know what I was wearing? I was wearing acid wash jeans. I was wearing white pony sneakers. You ever heard of ponies? Yeah, yeah. White pony high tops. I had a mullet. <laughs> I had mullet. A, I had a thick silver chain, not, not like a King Tut. Like like a King Tut chain, not like a like a like a link Cuban chain, like a you know, and then I was wearing a white mesh shirt. Oh my! God. Now not like a thick mesh, like a Miami mesh, but like a football right. white, white mesh. Oh. I'm 15 years old, <laughs> and my mom was in the front row, and the first joke I ever told was, "Everybody, I'm Josh. I'm 15. I'm really nervous. My mom and dad are here, and this is the first fucking time I'll be able to fucking swear in front of my cocksucking mom." And the place just. 
I, I was addicted. Wait, that's brilliant. Wait, did that's it jump? So like, did, okay. dude, I was addicted at that moment. But I'll tell you, the moment before, the moment before, I don't know if I ever told you this. My mom and dad, I saw them this weekend in Reno, and my mom reminded me of this. She goes, "Do you remember what you said to me before you went on stage that first time?" She said, "Your knees were shaking." And I was like, yeah, I don't remember that. She goes, I said to you, you don't have to do this. We can go right now. And you said to me, no, I have to do this. And I will tell you, the knees shook, but as I started to walk on stage, I still get chills when I think of this. As I started to walk on stage, it just felt good. Mm -hmm. I really just felt, and when I get up there, I'm like, I, I, Always from the first second I stepped on stage, I fucking loved it. And I, if you come see my shows, you can, t I, but I you hope can you tell walk that away. Through the screen. Like that you I can love see, this show. even through social media, I enjoy watching you even just through the screen. It's very authentic and genuine. You just have fun. I love it. I, I, there have been times, you know, like everything does this. I will tell you before he started coming on the road with me, I was talking to my wife a little bit about. What, what am I doing? I'm traveling a lot. But, you know, I read a statistic that you spend 92% of your time with your kids ages 0 to 18 in their lives, in your life. 92%. So this bonus time for me. So as soon as he was like, I want to come, I was like, I'm doing this for as long as you want to do it. Okay, so with him wanting to start and you having, because you've done a lot. You did Last Comic Standing. You were a writer on two huge shows. You had your own show on CMT. Mm -hmm. Like you've had an entire career. New York Times bestselling author. Yes. Hey. Say a lot of proud. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you yeah. a bell for yeah. that? <laughs> Boom, bitch. Yeah. Okay, whatever we need, whatever. Uh, bing, yeah. And, uh, boop. Um, um, was there, you know, we joked about this, and you also, we said it before the mics turned on. The funny thing about comedians is we're funny because we have trauma. Yeah. Was there anything specific that sort of led you down the direction of stand up comedy? Um, A specific trauma? Yeah, maybe specific, or was there certain things that happened growing up that really fed uh, you wanting to be on that stage doing stand-up comedy? I can tell you this. It's interesting. On our last podcast, I said to him, hey, I think I'm going to get a therapist. And he was like, why? And I said, you know, I've, thought, I've talked about it before, but I finally like myself enough to do something about the things that bother me. Right? Such a powerful thing to say, by the way. It, I like, finally kudos. feel like I deserve to heal. Mm. That being said, I would tell you from age 12 and under, I don't remember anything. Mm -hmm. And so I may discover that trauma you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I may discover that, and I don't know if I want to. Right. It's the scary part. I really, because if there was trauma, I'm not at a point in my life where I want to hold grudges or point fingers. I'm so far past that energy. Like, I don't think it does any good. I don't, not that I don't think, I know it does zero good for you to hold on to things. So I, it's weird. I'm, I, I want to go into therapy with like, I want to let go of this, but I don't want to then get something tacked on to me. Right. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. I don't want, I don't want extra baggage. I don't want like that's, that's, I don't want yeah. any extra but so so I can tell you that the feeling of needing validation is why I got on stage to begin with. I don't have that anymore from the people sitting in front of me. I really am very confident with what I do and right. I've been doing it a long time and I know I'm really good at what I do, right? And so so and I know it's a conversation and I'm super grateful for everybody who comes to my shows now. But there was that hole in me that I needed filled all the time. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we're, what, we're supposed to be laughing about yeah, the yeah. trauma, right? Yes, so, you know, that was perfect. Okay, okay. But wanna... so so I don't I don't <laughs> I don't I couldn't put a, my finger on it, but I know that feeling of empty, feeling empty. Right. And not only the feeling of feeling empty, but the feeling of I have to be the clown all the time. Mm -hmm.
Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Listen, I, I started doing stand-up comedy. I became a singer first and foremost because I didn't have the love coming from my home and yeah. I wanted everyone to love. I just wanted to experience love. So I like did all of that. So that's my trauma. So I always want to know the reason behind people going on stage. Was it validation? Was it the desire for love? I went to, I, I did go to therapy. Yeah. And we unlocked a bunch of things and then I made everybody go to therapy. And I made my dad go to therapy <laughs> and everyone stuck in therapy with me. But I got to tell you, it's been the best thing that's ever could have happened for me, it didn't take anything away from me. And, and like you, I didn't want to get stuck in anything. I don't want yeah. to blame anybody, but I wanted to know, I wanted to heal for me. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. Um, and I think I've done enough work on my, I told him also on the podcast, I've, I've done, I've taken myself as far as I can, but I, I need that. I really have done a lot of work on myself in areas that I felt bad about. And I've done all, I, I just need a little, I, there's, I've taken myself as far as I can, you know? So who knows? I might, you know, I might come back on here in six months and just be like, I should have like, gone to therapy. I can't believe what happened to me. Yeah, but you know what's really <laughs> cool? First of all, you're welcome anytime you want. And I'm telling you, as someone who loves therapy now, and like I'm Italian Jewish, we didn't go to therapy. No. But I did. And I was like, we were all going. By the I way, the like food it's... at your family reunions must be the best. What family reunions? None of us speak to each other. Got it. Then so, forget it. Yeah. Yeah. The, like, that was the only line when she made most of them go to therapy. <laughs> oh, yeah. With her. yeah, yeah. yeah. I could have guessed that. Yeah, yeah. My bad. Listen, My it bad. was so intense. It yeah. really their was. Fam their family reunions are but in therapy. I'm, but listen, that's why I'm obsessed with the two of you because it's so interesting watching the the two of you because I'm a singer because my dad was a musician and that was the thing that we were most bonded on was music so although everything else was a mess we did have that bonding thing and, and now we've worked really through that but it's so nice to see like a father and son and then to see like you you said I've done everything in my career and now you're just coming up like is that such an interesting perspective now for you to watch your son yeah get to start it's, his journey now it's also so well i don't know and i'm not sure if he knows if he wants to be a stand-up comic that's true right fair I, fair I, I, but i tell everybody yo if you ever had the itch to get on stage you should yeah it's it's such a powerful drug and it may be your thing it may not but yeah. and so i love watching him mm, i love watching him his mind start to, I think being creative is, is so important for everybody. Yeah. However you want to be creative, whether it's de decorating your house or do you know what I mean? There's totally, different ways to be creative, outlet. how you cook, whatever that, but that part of your brain. And so I just love the fact that I get to watch it every weekend and I can see him make little tweaks in his jokes. And I'm like, I'm so proud of yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm just more, excited i love the young energy and the learning all the time and so when it's around me on the weekends and it's him and i can see him getting better and better and getting more confident and more confident it is like the best thing it's the best look when i used to go on the road all i would think about was my shows all day i don't think about it until we show up at the club for me yeah, it's just that. all it's it's fun time yeah yeah you know and he's he's funny yeah. I hope so. He's funny. He's, I mean, he's only been doing it five months. Listen, and five months is not a long time. No. Like you're right. He said out there, he said, yeah, I, I got like my first 17 like minutes. And I was like, bro, that's a long time. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I almost said that's 20. That's so like, good. Ago, three it's a ago. lot. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I, but the, I understand that addiction and that Excuse drug. Me. Like, I, you know, I also like, I've come up with a couple jokes that I've thrown into one of my, one of my, one of my things. And, and, and it's getting a laugh every time. And I'm like, I'm so happy that that's actually funny. And that like my thoughts are actually transcribing well towards the, my, you know, my performance and to the audience as well. So like that satisfaction is definitely, um, um, addicting. You're also so handsome on stage. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, 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 I've had to up his style a little bit when we we're on the yeah, road. Yeah, he so. got me into J's. I, the J's on your feet look so cute, by the way. They're women's shoes. I'm, they listen women's to me, shoes. and that's the way to do it. They're so cute. I buy the little boys ones because they're cheaper. Yeah. So, I feel that. so does my girlfriend. Yeah, listen, yeah I just bought these. I'm not, I was a Vans girl for a long time. I'm a J's girl forever. Yeah. And then I went back to Vans because they were on sale in the little boys section. And I was like, They're super cool. Love shows. them. Vans, 
Jays, they'll always be The Vans, yeah. easy easy to just put on with anything you're running out the house. But, like, yeah. I, I think I always have some sort of Nike that are sitting by my front door. So I just... Whoop. These are new, huh? Yeah, I just got these dunks. Those are so cute. I got sad because we had to return that, uh, the... the we fo I fostered a dog with my girlfriend for, like, three days cute. last week. And, like, legit, I felt like this was, like, a, a soul dog for me. Like, he was so everything. Oh. But we have a dog. And we, he did not do well. Let me like, see the dog. Which, which, which one? Let me see the one you fostered. Oh, does well, he have a home? He got a dog. Yeah. He found a home. Okay, good. We're, we're very excited. I went to there. We did like a, a video with them, and I posted them all over. And That's so he went cute. on a like a he went got a two minute news segment on Channel Eight the other day. Okay, so the dog's got more press than I yeah, do. Yeah, What's yeah. So, happening? yeah. So <laughs> he's gonna get an agent. He got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's repping this dog? Okay. He, Nevada. <laughs> In here, you guys can leave. Nevada SPCA repped real well. Yeah, yeah Moki. Yeah. come on in. Yeah, he, yeah, right. yeah, he found a home quick, uh, so we were very excited. But so after cute. we dropped him off, I was, I was upset. He was there. Yeah, I was upset because yeah. I loved him. And also, just like I hate returning. Like we've, we've, we've dropped two dogs back off at shelters before, and. It's so hard, like, because I just want to give every single one of them. So does my girlfriend. We just want to give them homes. Like, yeah, of course. None of them deserve to be in that little cement yeah, box also, by themselves. He's such. Look, I'm gonna put him on blast. Oh, oh come on. He's such a sensitive. Always been. Oh, oh yeah. A I was sensitive. A, I was a wreck he, all morning. Look at a as as a four year old. He was a cry tears of joy guy. My, my wife and I came home from a, the, a trip to San Diego. My mom was staying with him. And when we pulled in the driveway, he and my mom were standing in the driveway. And he was doing this. That little boy clap, jumping up and down. Oh, my. And you grabbed and, him. And, just, and he, I, we got out of the car and he was doing this. And he came and he jumped and he gave us both a huge hug and he was crying. And I go, what's wrong, buddy? He goes, I'm just so happy to see you. Oh my God! Okay, when were you born? When's your birthday? Ninety-seven, March seventeenth. I'm a St. Patrick's Day baby. Oh, are you a Pisces? I'm a Pisces. Yeah, Pisces He's are a so sensitive. Libra. Or yeah, oh, Libra, your birthday's coming up. Yeah, Super. I know. Happy oh birthday. my God, that's right. Is it a right. big one or is it like a regular one? Nah, it's a regular yeah. one. Okay, one one year closer birthday. to sixty. Fifty-four. Are you 54? Yeah. Okay, rad dude. You look cool. Yeah, all. I'm not too terrible. No, he's doing pretty well. No. You're, doing, you're doing pretty well. It's because Jews age well. I don't want to brag, but we do. You know what I think happens with Jews? I think we age. Jews are like Asians in that they age well until one day you're like, oh, you got old quick. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's a, going, it's you going, know, it's uh, going. You're dead. Asian, like Asian people are like, man, you look great. And tomorrow you're Mr. Miyagi. Like how the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Same with Jews. Jews will look good, and then all of a sudden our faces just fall. drop. Yeah, they yeah. just fucking. They're just like whoop, collagen is like. See you later. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, then that's a good reminder for me to get the collagen. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> well, why do you drink collagen every morning? In I do. Coffee? Fuck yeah, I do. Good. Collagen. You're supposed to drink your collagen. This you're... dude's health, he's he's a crazy health nut. Not crazy Listen, health nut, but he's I a health collagen, nut for sure. and it's uh, Modere. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Well, it's my show. Who's gonna yeah, yeah, get you me can in say trouble? Yeah. And it's the bomb, and I drink the collagen. Oh, and it's, it's delicious. So I, good. I used I used to put it in protein shakes. It was amazing. You don't. Yeah. But you don't need it. No, you should start. I made my seven year old. Can start any anyone can start. That's funny. Get yeah. on the collagen. Listen, you're gonna have some like, real strong Achilles if you start taking <laughs> collagen right now. I somebody told me a guy around my age. He goes, you should start taking collagen. And I was like, why? I thought he was talking about my face. I go, why? He goes, strengthen up your Achilles so you don't tear him. I was like, by the way, that's something that dude read somewhere and he got you're, false information. No, you know what he was? He was a dude who's a YMCA five on five basketball guy. He oh, sets a, oh, sets yeah, a lot yeah. of picks. You know sets what I'm a lot saying? of picks, but also like in between games, comes out and yep, like yep. tries to show everybody's he's, lifting weights. Tries he, to give like four tips. Two knee tips. pads, two elbow yeah, pads, yeah, yeah, yeah. goggles. Yeah, and he comes out. <laughs> he, he, uh, he comes out and tries to Zero give like Zero pussy is what he's getting. Ooh, that's <laughs> not all yeah. day, he tries to come give like form tips to yeah, people. Yeah, lifting. he's showing yeah. people how to throw chest pads. I hate people. Yeah. Let's just show them how we hate people. I hate people like that. You're like, I don't want your unsolicited advice. Oh, uh, my, oh, was one of my, my girlfriend's biggest, uh, possibly my big, her biggest pet peeve right now is unsolicited advice. Just because all the way around about, her, uh, especially about our dog. She's like, hey, I, I didn't ask. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna text her some advice. <laughs> no, don't. Now, do you like this don't. girlfriend? I love her. She's I love amazing. that so much. That's so nice. She's okay, amazing. now Jacob, this is your daddy, and he just said all the best things about you, mm. and I love that. On the other flip side, how does it feel to be touring with your dad? It's awesome. Like, I mean, growing up, 
I definitely look the things I've already done in my life, and a lot of them are thanks to him. Uh, I, 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 it's amazing. Like yeah, like the, growing up at the comedy store isn't a thing that a lot of people can the, say, except was for the maybe bat boy for the Red Sox. Yeah, I was, I was a bat boy for Major League Baseball teams. We've been to the Dominican you Republic. Retire. You've already done so much. <laughs> but like, I, I, we've, we've traveled. We've done amazing things. I can get him some college. Yeah, and yeah. Retire. He's <laughs> we uh, did a tour of Australia, New Zealand. We got UK and Europe coming up. Like I've done a lot wow. of amazing things, and it's just the start. So like. Uh, the the you know it, it's it's just another awesome experience that we get to do together and um, I there's only more things to come like I, this is only really the start of it because it's only been five months of like yeah. really pushing forward um, so we're just uh, it's it's been a blast and we're ready to just kind of do take you over. remember being that little going to the comedy clubs no I think I was a little too young to He's, have those memories yeah I will say though I did always remember Ralphie May always had candy in his pockets and he'd always oh. give us some. I mean, it wasn't for us intentionally, say. but he did always have candy in his pockets. Yeah. If so. you check that other pocket, he might have had a quesadilla. So. <laughs> 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 you never know. Listen, yeah. that's amazing. He he was, you know, he we did a roundtable for Chelsea once, and I was the only one with older kids. And so on Father's Day one year, it was we did it was me, Brad Wallach, and a guy named Jeff Wild. Oh, mm -hmm. And and Brad had his son on his lap, and his son was probably four. No. Yeah, younger. They were two practically infants. Yeah, they, they were, were infants, and then like the, the, they were still in the mother's womb. He was they were fourteen. So, yeah, I was fourteen. So, so they, I was he, the only one who could form. Brad words. and Jeff had babies on their lap, and Chelsea made him sit on my lap. Yeah. So he I was, love was it. Awesome. fourteen, sitting on my lap. Uh, my I asked leg was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I I asked the girl the homecoming on Chelsea lately. Yep. Um, my oh, my, my fresh my that... freshman year, I really set a bar way too fucking well, high. Well, but ask, tell her why. You had to do it on TV. Oh, the girl I asked said uh, it wasn't creative enough. Uh, creative enough. Ask me again. Can you believe that shit? Wait, this girl that you asked to prom. Oh, I, so I asked to go to what homecoming. Were you, were you were a freshman. I was a freshman. What are you? Fourteen as a freshman? Yeah, yeah. She said, you, "How'd you originally ask?" Her? I, I well, we kind of already had like. I would say a thing going on and so I was just we were hanging out and I felt like it was just like kind of the right time to ask so there was no real like planning to it it was kind of like spur of the moment for me uh -huh. so she I, like but you just yeah, asked her 14 yeah, yeah exactly like there was no there was no yeah, thought put into isn't it isn't that how that's yeah, how I always ask people no, ask it's them. gotten way too creative nowadays like people set up like scavenger hunts TikToks or signs or yeah like if I was a kid like if, if the Chelsea thing was when I was like when TikTok was a thing I would it would have been crazy viral. it would have been the most viral thing of all time okay, I bet what? you I could still post it and it would still go nuts do you have the video I could find it on YouTube probably you should find it and put it on TikTok Okay, this it. is an interesting concept, though, because you're a generation that's all TikTok and watching comedians blow up on mm -hmm. TikTok, and it's very valid, and that's how a lot of comedians in the pandemic yep. really found their voices, in, in, including a lot of different entertainers, and you're like old school, like you just went to the clubs, you did your thing, totally different. What are some of the things that um, you notice maybe about his generation that today that would have been, I mean, what are the differences? Like, it's gotta be nuts to well, see how they just blow up so easily. There is Not a, easily, there's a whole, I don't wanna discredit but, TikTok no, yeah. and all of but that. But I will also say, he got with the sign of the times, like, I feel like you, like, right at, in the, like, somewhere in the heart of COVID, like, you started to have some doubts about what you wanted to do. And like, cause I remember, cause I moved back in for a little while and he really, picked up on just doing online stuff and doing different things and reaching out to so many different people on different nights. Like he used to do this thing called the high life and every Wednesday night he would sit in our backyard on his laptop and he would stream himself getting high, smoking weed and doing mushrooms and reading children's books live. to adults live in front of like 4,000 people. And we would, we would, he, would do, he high, would do giveaways. There like, were some high lives it was, where I had, uh, over 200,000 people on my Facebook. And I was like two and a half grams of mushrooms in, probably 200 milligrams of edible. Yeah. And I would read children's books. Sometimes I would I would draw, and people had to guess the celebrity that I drew. Oh, he would do accents. Oh, like, my and, like, God. and then I would sign the picture and send it to Brilliant. people. So he just, like, he, he really, I will say, like. Yeah, because your social media is big. You have a great following. Oh, he's I, got a great following. I'll like, tell you his, what. His community is. Awesome. 
the amazing people. Love them. I got early, early 2000, whenever we were on Woodley. I don't remember what that was. 2018, probably. Yeah, because 2019 was the hell year for you guys. Around around 2017, 18, I, um, I was getting ready to do a special, and I was like, I'm going to film this myself. My agent was like, why are you doing that? I said, I'm going to put it on YouTube. And he was like, that's career suicide. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, you, because old school, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, can't give mm -hmm, away mm -hmm, your material. Mm -hmm. You can't give it away. And I was like, I think you're wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where people are going to be watching comedy because it's free. It, it happened to music. It's going to happen to us. Mm -hmm. And so I want to get ahead of it. Yo, I was, I think Steve Trevino might have beat me, but I, you know, I was one of the first people to put the special on there because I I saw the old school guys, my friends. Yeah. And I saw them starting to be like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know. I recognize this. This is when people don't adjust to the new shit. That's so funny that you said that. I really want you to talk about this because I think this is the ba the biggest, biggest, biggest lesson in careers is like. You, I learned this from my fiance, and oddly enough, I learned this from my dad. My dad is a phenomenal jazz musician, but he never went to school. So at 70 years old, he went back to college. He has his master's. That's awesome. That's amazing. He's amazing. I love He's that. the best. Yeah. And I said to him, why did you do that? And he said, well, I'm not dead. What else am I going to do? And I was like, yeah, you're right. With my fiance as well. Like, she's like, either you get with it or you don't. Like, that's what really sets you apart and mm -hmm. so i just love that you're like i watch these old school guys not do it and i was like yeah it's time to do well it's crazy because i also so i told him that was the i think that's really the biggest difference between our generations and like how you're saying newcomers are really like up and coming and finding their way into different spotlights like i had told i was i was telling him for like five or six years prior to that i was like yo you really need to like Put stuff on social media because when I tell people that you're a comic, they're like, "Where can I find this stuff?" I'm like, "Tuesdays night, Tuesday nights on Chelsea lately, or at the Comedy right. Store, or at the Improv." Like, there's nothing for people. There was there was one clip on YouTube for like seven or eight years before you started posting stuff, <laughs> and it was that blueberry muffin story from the Laugh Factory. Oh yeah, and it yeah, was yeah, the yeah. only clip of Joshua if you could find of just his stand up on the internet. And the minute he started doing the Facebook and the YouTube and YouTube and everything, he was like, "Oh," and I was like. Uh -huh. Yeah, dude, use and abuse the fact that we have so many platforms that you can f freely put shit on. Do you like, think he's like also helped your career a lot? Like oh he's yeah. like your little manager. Like he's so smart and he's young and he gets it and he's in it and he loves you. He he's helped. I'm also it, like a roadie, so he's helped it in so many ways. Right. I I am re-energized. Yeah. To do this because it's I want to look as long as he wants to do it, I'm doing it. Right. So like I need I, it re-energized me. And I'll tell you something, the difference between and I know a lot of guys my age, when I say guys, I just mean people my age who are like these young kids don't get comedy's changed now. And I would say the big difference between is that like you feel like, oh, I have to put out new material all the time. And that's not I'm not going to say who, but. A lot of, I think a lot of big comics and were comics who have specials, their first specials were great, but they felt pressure to get that second special out so right. quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason Chris Rock waits three or four years, because it takes a long time yeah. to get an hour really good, but you don't have that time, which is why you see crowd work. That's why you see so much right. crowd work and stuff now, because people feel pressure to put out all of this material. And it's unfortunate because I think it's hurting stand up a little bit. I think it's great because it's bringing so many eyeballs to it. Yeah. Like guys like Matt Reif, who, and Matt's Crazy. super funny, dude, and super quick. And, and all his training. Handsome. Yeah, so God handsome. God damn it. Damn. But so I'm gay, so I don't care about him. Keep going. He is. I'm, 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 I'm straight, but God damn it, he is no, handsome. Just, He's good Lord. No, my sister is upset. Obsessed with it. She's like, just get him on your show. The I'm minute, like, okay, the, minute the white girls found him, it was over. No, he's but oh he's my goodness! So quick. But his training smart. on that Nick Cannon show, Wild and Out. Yeah, the Wild and yeah. Out. But his he's, training on there he, was like he really is super funny. Like his crowd work is next up, out, outstanding. He's so clever to me. I think yeah. he's very yeah. smart, I agree. and I think you have to be very smart to do stand up comedy. And I think that 
you both are obviously uh, comics and you know that and you're so successful and you're like doing your thing and you have to be smart to do it, which you obviously you are. Are you gonna, are we gonna write a parody song together? Is that gonna happen? I don't know, maybe if you'll play for me, I'll think about it. Um, <laughs> you did bring your guitar. Listen, I brought it. I asked you to bring your guitar and I will say this, I, um, I started on American Idol yes. and I'm an idol girl. And you had this incredible parody of Kelly Clarkson since you've been gone. Yeah. And I'm going to send it to her because I think it's so funny. And I wanted you to play it, but I want you to play anything. I would love for you to play something. Okay, let me. We were, and we were I big idol people asked growing up. To bring. And by the way, I am a huge Kelly Clarkson fan. Yep, yep we love Kelly. We used to do we bits on Chelsea because she used to make fun of me. She was like, Are you the only straight Stop. male? Who is a Kelly fanatic? I'm like, if she comes on the show, I'm gonna lose my shit. Yeah, you yeah. love Kelly. Oh, we uh, we we love oh, Kelly. This is a, we this is a we thing. It's we love Kelly. I, it, we so love and Kelly. for a while, and then when Fortune joined Chelsea, Fortune and I were huge. Love Kelly Clark, such a <laughs> she's amazing. I one of her. the genuinely nicest humans she's the best good and soul good heart next level right now right yeah oh my but god do you know if you text her right now she'll 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 text you right back and even if she'll be like hey i'm really busy i can't but she, she will text you back right 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 back it's such a um i love those questions. i love that all right you set up your guitar okay. jacob yes. um i want to talk to you about because i do want to play a game also now that you're working with uh data I want to do a game called Who's Your Daddy? And you have to guess. <laughs> okay. Well, I, the answers. I, hey, man, I, I mean, I feel like you might have to be playing this, too. What's that? You have, I mean, well, look, I feel like the Who's Your Daddy game, you might have to play because of the something that's on your shoulder. The, the transcript that you have tattooed oh on your right God. shoulder. We so, did. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell it. You get your, you get your guitar okay. out. Okay. Listen, so, Daddy-O, you set up. Jacob, go ahead. So we... <laughs> We filmed a show. We filmed the show <laughs> called <laughs> We filmed the show called Family Tussle. We produced it, we created it, we shot it all on our own, and we posted episodes Love on this. YouTube. Um, Father Son Competition. We do a competition. Uh, winner makes the loser do something stupid. So <laughs> he it never ends well. May or may not have a tattoo on his back, right on his back right shoulder. And uh -huh. it says Jacob is my biological father. So. That's uh, not a tattoo. No, it's legit a tattoo. You can see, if you go on YouTube and look at Family Tussle and it's you find the. Oh, no, yeah, I want it here live on So Funny It Hurts for Kelly Clarkson. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anything. Kelly, if you're seeing you this, please. We love you. Oh, my God. a competition. And then you had to get Jacob is my biological father. Or dad. dad. Jacob's my biological dad. But I also made yeah, it, father would be too formal. What but was I, I thinking? But I also made him get his... Here, you want to... Help your, help your dad here? out. It's on, it's on the right one. Yeah, don't hurt your shoulder because you have that rotator cuff injury. Not him telling us that... Legit. Jacob is my... Oh my god, it really is! Oh my god! <laughs> you fucking so, did Yeah, <laughs> he really did. I he also, also made me get my butthole waxed. That too. <laughs> Honestly, I am for that. Well, Can it's I funny. We, you, yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was I want to tell you something, though. So we're in the little <laughs> esthetician's room, and they're smaller. Did you scream, ah, Kelly Clarkson? No, I wish I had. <laughs> uh, we're there. Little esthetician room. So the guy is on this side, and the camera people are on this side. And I made him get down at the business end. And, and so the only loss I'm on all yeah. fours. And the guy, because I had to get the front and the back. Oof. The mound hurts way more than the. Chase, you doing okay? Thinking about this butthole. I'm doing. Waxing? I'm doing good. I'm thinking about butthole. I'm considering it. Yeah, okay. and listen to it. The mound hurts. I just feel like for dudes, the butthole like, doesn't hurt. Okay. Oh, the butt. Okay. Good. Well, here's what happened. When you pulled the when <laughs> you your voice high, okay. when you like, pulled the wax, was? <laughs> I was surprised it didn't hurt. Mm. And I said to him, "Can I ask you an honest question?" Like, oh. And he was like, "What?" I said, "Do I have a tough butthole?" And he was like, "What?" And I was like, I thought it would hurt, and it doesn't. So does it? Do I, I mean, to make me feel good, do I have a tough butthole? And he was like, I'm not allowed to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. I have to tell you, I don't know yeah. what it is with buttholes and comedians, but we had Jason Ellis on. I don't yes. know if you know Jason he's Ellis. A, yeah, he's a menace. Jason <laughs> Ellis a menace. told me all about his butthole, and how he wanted his butthole tattooed, and then he 
it was hard for him to get his butthole tattooed because the tattoo artist didn't want to look gay, but then he did get the spider yeah. web tattoo butthole. And I was like, I know about everyone's butthole on this show, and I don't know why. I want. We, I mean, I want to know. I we, watched we, a we, video of someone getting their butthole tattooed just because I wanted to know wh- how, what, why, why, what the reaction was. Probably it, not good. Yo, know, their face looked exactly like I thought it was gonna. Yeah, yeah. Well, did we have Jason Ellis on a t- on on one of your control chaoses? Yeah. And then and then he told us he was wearing women's panties at that time. He was just he's a yeah that dude's a menace. I love it. He's, he's awesome. I love him. Yeah. He's great. Okay. He's great. I love buttholes. I love that you have a tough <laughs> yeah. butthole. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a tough butthole. Uh, I, I will. I will. Bu- Bubblegum butthole is what I call Listen, it. Listen, I bet your wife really does appreciate that. No one's trying to be down there fighting like a weed whacker. I appreciate that for your wife. She was probably happy about it. Yeah. I will, I will not Sweet be testing angel. the strength do you, do you of my butthole. Do you know what I, by the way, my wife. Hot, by the way. Smoke show. I know. Absolute smoke show. Can we just really make sure we drill that home? So beautiful. Yeah. Good and for you. Crazy. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, duh, if I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you how old she is until we get off the air. Okay. But she's like every morning I wake up I'm like she's still here. <laughs> it's Aww. working. Yeah. The roofies are still Did working. Did you meet your wife um when he how was old were you when you like four? Four, I think. Oh wow. Okay, so she's been yeah. around for a very long time. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. She's well my my biological mother who I don't speak to anymore i don't really speak to that side of the family period um like that's my biological mom or my mother this is my mom like this is my this is my person like she's she's been part of the family since day one yeah so she really is the glue in this operation well like when his career took off like like uh, took a took a a big turn in high school for me. He was she started torn every weekend, and that was diff- difficult for I think everybody because every sports team I had ever played on, and, like anything growing up until the age of thirteen, he had coached. Like he was there for every game. So was my mom. All f- like family members, everybody came out. But he had coached every single one of my teams pretty much until my last season playing ball when I was thirteen. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to high school and I was playing on certain teams, he was gone on the weekends. So like Friday night lights, he wasn't there. Thursday track meets. Um, sometimes we had like a, a random basketball game on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and he was there. But like you know, and obviously there was nothing to hold against him because he was he was you know doing what he was doing. He was yeah. you know taking a part in his career and doing something for it, and we were happy about that. So it it was you know it was what it was. I also had a car on the weekend when I had a license, so it worked out. Like all the, she all, was all, at but everything. My mom was it, at it was a, everything, but it was a particularly tough time for me. I think it was tough for all of us. Be, yeah, I was happy that my career was going better, but missing those moments, that was I even knew in the in the moment. Like sometimes you look back and you go, oh, "I wish I had missed," but I knew because you know my dad was not a real emotional. I would say my dad got emotional when his dad died. I love you came out of his mouth a whole lot more after his dad died, right? Yeah. But he showed up to everything. Right. And as I got older, I realized, oh, that was hard. That's hard to do, to show up. Yeah, because you're also, I think it's so interesting. I I feel like from what I've known of you today and just seeing you on social media, you're a very affectionate and loving father. Mm -hmm. Like... It's very apparent you love your children, and even when you came Absolutely. in, like you guys are buddies. Yeah, and I feel like there's no lack of you thinking that he loves you. Like it's the words come out. Do you think that you're like that because your father wasn't? Mm-hmm. Like you needed that emotional connection. I think so. I think it's why I really, and, and our relationships have changed. And as you get older, your relationship with your parents of change. Course. And who you may have talked to easier when you were a kid that might change when you're older. But I. Definitely had a better relationship with my mom because that emotion was something that I needed and she gave. And, you know, I I remember, you know, when you have a family, you forgive your parents for a lot Mm -hmm. because you realize, oh, this This is is everybody has to make sacrifices. This is hard. And sometimes you make choices. You're flying by the fucking seat of your pants. Yeah. You have to make a decision for another human, and, well, and, and hope that dad, that that's crazy, dude. And there was but, three of us, but 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 even like when it was Beth and I, like you're flying by the seat of your pants. You are hoping that the decision you're making for your kid is the right one, and there is no way to fucking know until it happens. And so I and 
you're also a human being who has bad days. And on those bad days, you still have to look after other people. And some days you're not your best. And when you're a kid, you just don't understand that. And you remember that day when he or she wasn't their best. Mm -hmm. You don't remember the 45 days in a row where they got up at five in the morning and they made your breakfast and they cut the fucking crust off your sandwich or they got you to school or whatever was happening. Mm -hmm. You remember that one fucking time because that sticks with you. And that's, I started to recognize that, that it's an impossible standard to expect mm -hmm. your parents to be perfect. There are also people, you know? And as I got older, I also was like, yep, yeah, I, I just was forgave them. I just forgave them as a group. And I was like, you know what, I know you guys. Not everybody's gonna be the best parent. I think most people do the best they can do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's like, I'm gonna fuck up my kid today. Of course. I think some people are just not, great at it. I think most people do the best they can do. And my dad was not an emotionally equipped dude. That's a generation of guys who weren't. Yeah. And I just had to forgive him for who he is. Right. And that really changed when the kids came along because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I get this. I'm in a bad mood. And I just snapped at one of them. That's how that happened. Yeah. Because I am a human being. It's crazy. Lisa, my fiance and I I've had to have the conversation a lot about having children and I had a really, I don't speak to my mother at all. Mm -hmm. um, and where I think it's so beautiful that you've forgiven and, and done all of that. I still struggle with my mom because um, it's unnatural. I feel like for a mother and a daughter to not have a relationship. Yeah. Um, so I really struggle. I really do mm -hmm. struggle with that. With my dad, he decided to go to therapy and I was able to forgive him because he was willing and then he did try. Right. But I will say when having to have this conversation with Lisa about getting pregnant, we you know, we do it differently. We have to go to fertility clinic. It's a whole mm -hmm. million whole steps before yeah. we get pregnant. And I said for the first time with just the state of the world and where we're at right now and everything, I'm barely recovering from my own childhood trauma. I don't know if I can raise children yeah. right now. I'm scared. Like, I'm yeah. scared. Yeah. It's a huge responsibility, and I see it as one. Like, it's not like... I'm so curious. Does... I guess maybe you just answered that. Does your, your childhood and whatever experiences you have does that make you think you'd be a good parent or are you scared that you would be your not your mom no. but, but do you know what i mean i'd be the best parent i'm okay. the best aunt i'm a really really good aunt i why it's scared why i would be scared is i'm very sensitive mm -hmm. i care like a lot like i'm all love mm -hmm. my niece and my nephew oh my god i'm so in love how with old them. are they Seven, she'll be September 10th, my love niece, it. and then my nephew's 13. And they are truly like the loves of my, I'm, obs I'm obsessed That's with awesome. them. My niece looks like me, she acts like me, she's my big, oh my God, I'm in love <laughs> I with love her. That. Little mini you. I love yeah, her. and I love I'm like, I mean, even if she wasn't, like she's better than me, like she's a m better version of me. But I'm like, it is intense to have that responsibility. Like it's not something that you're like, I'm gonna have, I don't see it like that. Like yeah. it's, so I commend you and I respect you deeply being able to have a stand-up career, have it be successful while raising three kids. Obviously, you did well. They still want to talk to you and go on tour with you and bunk up with you. Like, that's a big deal. I don't well, let I him don't, get his own Yeah, room I don't on. want to bunk up with him. I don't he, let him yeah. get his own yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he makes me share a hotel room. You know what he so named this tour? I answered that question. Yeah. You want to know what he named this tour? One room, two beds. <laughs> Whenever we check in a hotel, they're like, one room? I'm like, that's right. Is there yeah. two beds in it? They're like, yep. I'm like, that's our room. Listen to me. You're, like, meet the, you're the father from Meet the Fockers. Yeah, you're pretty much. You're going to be Ben's yeah. Yeah. and he's the best. Yeah. Oh, well, well, we're going to go on the road, and we're not going to get up in the same room? Hey, buddy. But I mean, like, in, in all honesty, like... Uh, it makes the most sense, for, like, because what am I going to do when I come back from a show? Just do exactly what he's going to do, which is just watch Sports Center yeah, and go to sleep. Yeah, just together. Like, what's the point? Yeah. All right, I want to play Who's Your Daddy, and then I want you to play the guitar for us. Okay. Um, and now I don't know what to do. I feel like I should be asking I'll, you I'll, the question. I'll, I'll still, I'll he's still the answer. And you're the father here, and it's a parent by that touch. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. By the way, do you know what I made him do? Tell me. He lost. 
So he was punishing me with more physical things, the tattoo and the butthole wax. I punished him mentally. I made him sit out on Ventura Boulevard in Studio City on a Saturday afternoon. You know how busy that is? Yeah, love. Behind a table with a sign draped over the front of it that said, ask me for tips about living with herpes. <laughs> Can I tell you the people that came? <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, it was so funny. I've never seen so many disappointed mothers it in was one so place. Because we, we were also right next to a fucking we were near salt arts straw. Del- near arts. Not a salt and straw. We were near right near next to a straw. salt and straw in the arts deli right there on Ventura. Those are lovely people. Yeah. I know they are. <laughs> We love Arts Deli. We've been to Arts Deli for the last 20 years. Whenever somebody needed chicken noodle soup, we went to Arts Deli. Yeah, but right next to that salt straw. Yeah, yeah. You know what else I made him do? I made him go into CVS in Hollywood and ask the woman, this old woman behind the counter, where they kept their extra small condom. We had a great conversation, which ended with her saying, I don't know, this isn't my specialty. I'm just an old lady. I, and then I she had an earpiece, and I said, Stop. ask her. Awesome. I said, ask her. If she has a condom that's smaller than a double A, but bigger than a triple A. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, yeah. then he, said was so <laughs> he was like, okay, now yeah. ask her if you just take, if you take a chapstick tube and you take all the chapstick out of it, like if that's going to be big enough. Will that work? Will that work? It's on my YouTube channel. Yeah. The show's called no, Family I'll put Tussle. It in this clip. Yeah, it's I a lot want of fun. everyone to watch yeah. it. That's hysterical. We had a good time. We had a good time. That's so much fun. So you guys are like open. You guys know a lot about each other. Then. We know a lot, a lot about you each do. other. You like a talk lot. about everything. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Although sometimes, like either we're on stage or we're doing a live video, and I'll just think of something that I've never told them before. Like, uh, what was it? Like two or three years ago, we were doing a live in front of like. 2,000 people, and I was like, "Oh, did I ever tell you about that time that I walked in on you and mom having sex?" Yeah, live. Just so he could get the initial reaction. You want to know how old I was? 18. Uh, yeah. oh, I asked him, yeah. I go, did you pick up any tips? <laughs> <laughs> Take that to yeah. Mr. Bones. <laughs> Take that to Salt and so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, yeah, we, 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 we talk a lot pretty much about everything. I love that. Okay, so this should be easy. This should be normal. I hope so. Okay. Okay. It's nothing too intense. Okay, I'm keep pulling my okay. shorts down. My, 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 my no, pink, there's a lot of gay men my, that watch this. So I have a cute they'll be into it. Just keep it up. Oh, I, I wore the right shirt today. Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love that. Wait, I love that shirt. Yeah. Where'd you get that? You're an ally to this community. Oh, yes. we are We are allies, You're 100%. The best. Wait, wait, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I got this in Louisville. What a strange place to get that t-shirt. I know. <laughs> there was a what great What a strange store. place to get that t-shirt. That's, um, I got this, and that's, I also have my People Be Gay shirt. Yo, oh, yeah. I like you're to wear, pe- like, in the South. Like, People Do Be Gay, yeah. yes. Wait, can you send me that link? I love it. Yeah, 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 let, me your t- let me see your time. That's hysterical. You can't pray the gay away. Uh, co- comfort Colors is what it says. That okay. Feels like Does I'll find it, it for you. Feels like it's just for the loop. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and go online though, and I want you to send it to yeah, me. Yeah, I will. The yeah. the, the, the whole it. store was amazing, but You're this the shirt. Best. You've literally easily become one of my favorite people. The both of you. I'm so happy that you came. Thank it's you. like so nice. Uh, we're, and fun. I'm very, we're very happy we can make it. Thank yeah. you so much. And Beth is so invited next time too. Oh my gosh. She Listen, can hang with Lisa. She would love but the that. camera will just kind of stay on her. That's fine. Yeah. That's what well, you guys. I didn't see you guys were good to look at. I said you were fun to have on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. <laughs> good, totally good answer. Good answer. Good answer. Good answer. If I'm the totally camera kidding. stayed on her and we spoke, it'd be the perfect. Although concept. she's also no. smart. And I'm totally. She's a that. super intellectual. And this is a new company. I know you guys are great. Oh, yeah. yeah, show us up, the beautiful earth. Oh, I'm wearing the t- I'm wearing I'm wearing the t-shirt too. That we we coordinated un- you unintentionally. Guys are like so well nice to each other and so functional and so healthy. All of you are just so supportive of one another. It's a facade. Get out. <laughs> okay, there's yeah. a lot of yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. I love it. No, I love it. I, I think it's amazing. It's just so nice to see, and I think it's so important. Yeah, you know, I, I would. When people ask me about parenting and like, what advice would you give? The biggest, the two biggest ones I got would be, it can be fun or not fun. Completely up to you. If you make bedtime stressful every night. It's going to be stressful every night. You can be like, get to bed. Or you can be like, you can make it fun. It's it's up to you to set the tone. You can make cleaning up the living room fun or you can make it a chore. And like, it really does set the tone for the house and and how you want to be seen. I 
was a little scared of my dad. I didn't want my kids to be scared of me. I love that. I, I don't, for me, and I've had my own show and been a boss in places, I don't think ruling from fear is, it was never fun, it never worked well for me. So I didn't want to do that with other people. Mm. I'm, you're going to respect me. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to be scared of me. People. Mm, I don't like it. All right. Well, you might be afraid now. Um, okay, I want to ask you. Okay, I'm going to ask you, and then I'm going to ask you since okay. both fathers. Yeah, nice. <laughs> what is one thing you know about your father that he doesn't think you know? Mm. Oh, that's really interesting. What's your name? Who's your daddy? Oh, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. I like that song. What if we all just broke into yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> like a rom com. Oh, people awesome. came in from the. <laughs> <laughs> Chase whips out his yeah. drum. Just gonna start singing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is there anything? I don't know. I don't know if there is anything. Okay, that's okay if there's not. I mean, I could pick an uncomfortable one, maybe. Okay. That you may know, you may not. I mean, you know, I've stolen your weed, but I, I definitely know what size condoms you use. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the same, same drawer. drawer. Yeah. Same drawer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same, same drawer. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever think about that? They were in the same yeah, drawer. Right, yeah, right, yeah. right next so to each other. The way that your father's face went like this. Oh. Yeah, you know what was in that drawer? It was it was his weed, condoms, and whatever cash he had in his pocket. <laughs> that was, and yeah, then yeah, just yeah. a clutter of other shit. But yeah. like those were the three things that were always on top of everything else. So you know, you know. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's there's that one. Okay, what is one thing that you know about Jacob that he doesn't know? You know. Ooh. Well, I know what size condoms <laughs> you use too. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well, I mean, okay. I knew and always knew like where you hid your weed in your room. I just Yeah. Look, I was like, you know what? I I, I, I figured yeah, you know like well, look, I knew that he snooped and like we all are knew you a that. snooper? Hey, here's the thing. He was only a snooper. <laughs> he was to check because look, he was like, Look, you're staying in my room that I'm just not the one living in. Like this Here, is my house, this is my room. I'm just checking to make sure you're not doing anything dumb or stupid. My like, thing was this. I was never gonna bust them for normal high school stuff. You had a bottle of booze, you had some because I think strict parents make sneaky kids. Yeah, we okay. we know it. We right. I've seen it for yeah, sure. Yeah, I agree. But I was checking their rooms and their computers because I never wanted to be the parent on the news giving this interview. I didn't see it coming either. Do you know right. what I mean? Like he totally. seemed like such a nice kid. Yeah, 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 I just wanted to make sure I wasn't living with a psycho. Yeah, good for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you if that psycho is your kid, you're turning him in. A hundred percent. You gotta go. Fuck yeah. yeah. You gotta go, Dauber. I honestly. I understand that. I'm with that. I would tell you that most of the things, and I would have to think hard about that. I, if there were something about him, I would confront him. So I don't. I think we'd have whole, we'd have a conversation first. I know. Because when I created this game, I didn't think that you guys were best friends and 100 percent devoted to each other. Now I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, like the fuck. Like if there was something that I was concerned about, we talked about. It. I would straight up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that call vape him. you found in my room. That the was, what? I like, I, had a, I had one of those like giant like fuckboy vapes. Uh, like a nicotine vape oh, yeah, when uh -huh. I was like 16 and I only had it because it said it had zero nicotine in it and then he was like did you ever read the back of it I go yeah read the ingredients he goes no nah, look at the warning it has on the bottom all the stuff like the drip one that says zero nicotine even on the bottom the warning says in small print that everything can taste a small traces of nicotine in it and he, he was also like also just all the chemicals I was just like yeah, we're not and he also did say it was the one thing he was like he was like you can smoke weed that's fine no cigarettes no vapes and he was like the one thing there was it was the two and main things and then you things. had like a robot vape in your room yeah I, I had was a yeah. fucking mad. remember mad. that when that was a thing it was like <laughs> But, it was like a bro walking around with yeah. a fucking hookah. Yeah. I hate those the day, the, I, but I do so remember. They so fucking stupid. Yeah. They still, honestly, and no offense to anybody, yeah. you still look stupid with those fucking vapes. My it's brother. all this, all day. <laughs> yeah, it's. My fiance smokes up, my brother does, everybody, everybody. And I'm like, you guys look dumb. Just yeah. stop it. Yeah. And the huge cloud of just. The no, it was like they're the literally flavor, burning. The yeah, yeah, it's they're literally not. burning cotton. And then you'd burn I will say though, like the, <laughs> the, the smoke tricks that some people can do are pretty fire. I'm not gonna lie. Who gives a fuck? 
<laughs> they're just fun to watch. They're, they're just fun, they're just fun and amusing. Like, Until, like, like they're called you, party tricks. If you could yeah, blow two yeah, dragons party tricks. out of your mouth and then they fought each other, that'd be cool. Yeah, I smoke a lot of weed. That would be awesome. Uh huh. That would be sick. Are you a weed smoker? I don't do anything. I microdose and I do ketamine treatments. A ketamine. I've I've done treatments, but on Friday night, late at night. Recreational treatment. Yeah, yes. no, I, I, I have it. He I has. respect that so deeply. I go to this ketamine clinic. I actually, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed and, and recommend it to everybody. Life changing, right? I heard it was life changing. I have an appointment this week. I've done so many treatments since last year. I started last year and it changed my fucking life, dude. Crazy. It was the best thing I've ever done in my life, even over talk therapy. Were you depressed? Yeah, I had a lot. I had when my grandmother died in 2020. I feel like that was the catalyst to like a volcano. Like all of this just lava came out of like trauma and having to revisit and it was awful and it was so bad. And I was like crawling in my skin. I was very, very depressed, super anxious. I was like really, really struggling. And so I sought out help. That's when I started going to talk therapy. Someone had recommended ketamine and I've never been a drug user. I mm -hmm. just have addiction to my family, so I didn't wanna fuck with it. Yep. Um, and ketamine sounded out of control, but I was like, I at this point- I'll try anything. I'll do anything. Yeah, yeah. And it changed my fucking That's awesome. Life. That's amazing. It was the best. I cannot, it literally rewires your brain. Mushrooms did that for me. So, and I, 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 I did mushrooms. I did big mushroom trips. <coughs> also incredible. Mushrooms, mushrooms are amazing. A mushroom started me on my heel. Do you know what I did one night? So what I'll do is I'll take mushrooms in my room by myself on the road before him. And I would take mushrooms and go under my covers. And with the intent to heal parts of myself. Love it. And there was, I don't know if I ever told you this. I was, I don't know how long I was under the covers and I came out from under the covers and I said out loud, I forgive you. I hope you all can forgive me. I had gone under the covers and that's when I decided that grudges and all that stuff. And I verbally just forgave everybody that I had ever held anything against. And I asked for forgiveness from her forever. And the next morning I woke up and I felt so much lighter. I was like, "Crazy, I'm gonna keep doing this." Crazy, I'm upset. Crazy, you know, right? I had I don't know if no Che Dorena, but he came on. Who? So Che Dorena, no, a really great comedian as well. Um, and he talked about how uh, mushrooms were really the catalyst that um, sent him into healing as well. And I'm very, very about all of that mm -hmm. type of plant medicine. I'm very into all. I, I think it's incredible. Yeah. I do two and a half grams every Friday night before my show. Okay, well, can you give me the the connect? I don't have one here in Vegas. Yeah, I can. He's, he's you should come to the show on Friday night and watch. It gets I interesting. I will. I actually will. He's, I don't think I have a gig next Friday. He's got some I'm a, good I'm at, stuff. I'm I think a, I don't have a gig next Friday. I'm at Kimmel's this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. I'm in Reno visiting your parents and I'll take you <laughs> That would be amazing I'm if you guys sent me calling. a picture like, hey. I will. I'll awesome. text him and see if he's <laughs> yeah. my show. Grandma, grandma, then, grandma would probably love her. Grandma would love her. Grandma would love you. Grandma's, listen, grandma's I'm amazing. a grandma girl. My grandma loved me. I love grandma. I'm a grandma. Where's your show in Reno? It's at J Resort. It's oh, I just kicked Don't that shit it. out of you. I'm Don't so sorry. It. It's um, they're like revamping yeah. Reno and some of these they hotels. Are. And so I, uh, the last time I was there, I actually had a show, and then Nikki Paris and Katie Krizola came to visit me because awesome. they were doing the comedy, the uh, Laugh Factory, the Laugh Factory. Yeah. Yeah. There, it was great. That's but awesome. it's like I love Reno. I think it's come, so cute. Come, I'm, I'm, at my, I'm there Monday too. Come. Um, I will. I definitely will. Okay, we so could write before, a song before then. I would love to. I'd okay, play Monday. us a song to take us out. Okay. But before you do, I do want to talk because this airs this week. You'll be at uh, Kimmel's Club Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So over Labor Day weekend, and Monday is my residency. That's a little different. And you're different. there every Monday now. Every Monday. And every month. So my residency has a little more music, a little more. I like weird shit. I have. Love. I have. Um, I have. I'll, every now and then I have larger dudes with big boobies get on stage naked and dance behind me. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, he'll, sometimes, sometimes yeah. he'll do a dance off. Uh, yeah, sometimes I do it. My The dance off is between the people in the audience is a lot of fun. A blind lady came on stage for the dance, la dance uh, off. A 75 year old, super high blind woman came on stage. And Can yes. I tell you? Did she win? Yes. Yes. But that's the least you could fucking she do. She also, she wasn't wearing glasses. 
So she she fooled me. And she was sitting <laughs> down at the table with her Not daughter. Me. And I was like, hey, whose nunchucks are those? And her daughter was like, what? I go, whose nunchucks are those? And I on the table. She goes, those aren't nunchucks. Those are my, that's my mom's cane. She's blind. It was folded up. Oh my God! No. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. I was like, she had a great, she had a great <laughs> sense of humor. She was one of the funnier people we've met Honestly, at a show. They, like, the, they're never. I'll tell you this one time. She was I hilarious. Fucking, this is the most embarrassing singing story. I did a lesbian cruise with Lisa. She DJs and I sing, and then uh -huh. we like get Lisa's your fiance. Together. My fiance. That's mm -hmm. amazing. I say it like everyone knows it. And I was on stage with, and it was all these older lesbians. And older lesbians don't tend to like me How because come? I dress in all the ways that they fought against. Like, I like to shave my legs. Like, I like to do things that they yeah, like to do, yeah. right? So I already knew what I was going into, and I came in fucking hot. Like, I was in my, like, weave. It was a lot. So the women were already like, we've had enough of your drag queen ass. And yeah. I was like, can I hear this deeply? <laughs> so I had, like, one one she was like dancing and i was like it was during proud mary and i was like i'm gonna get this bitch big on crowd participation yep. i went down i'm like she's dancing i go all the way over to her and i go to give her the microphone and i say rolling she doesn't say anything and i said rolling and the woman dancing was not dancing she was her fucking interpreter she oh, was fucking no. deaf. and i was like i hate myself so much and then i said but can you Still sing. Yeah, oh, but, like, but did, what if she... No, I'm not going to do it. Should I do it? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what I was going to do. I'm not going to do it. But, but, uh, yeah. Do yeah. it. Do it. What if she was like... Mm. She did. She did. Mm -hmm. She did. I didn't yeah. want to say it. Why did you do it again? Why did you do a second one? <laughs> well, I, one I already jumped into the I water. I might as well swim it. around for a little Listen while. To me. Listen to me. And then she did. And then I was like, Michaela, you fucking asshole. Same with the nunchucks and fucking... I, you, you like get yourself in situations and you're like... Well, I'm here. But the, the rule should be this. You got to wear the glasses. Put a sign on you gotta them, put the glasses. It. Because here's another thing. And I'm going to say this as nicely as I can. But, you know, she didn't have blind head. Like, she was, you know, blind head, like, I'm talking to you. You know what I mean? And you're over here. That's blind, that's blind head. She was following me. So I'm like, and then when her daughter was like, oh, she's blind. I'm like, well, no glasses and following me. Yeah, she knows. Yeah, she's, you know, yeah. You know what she was doing? She was trying to get into Disneyland the next <laughs> day. She was practicing her handicap, that fucking bitch. She wasn't blind. That's she right. She didn't yeah. want to pay for a fast pass. That's right. <laughs> I don't blame her. Hey, That's guys, By the way, what a great idea. We're putting sunglasses on you yes. next time. Getting you a cane. Yes. I, yeah. I don't know if that'll work. Why not? You just have to commit. How would it? What do you mean? Just put the glasses on. We'll get you a cane. And yeah. yeah, don't be a pussy. Yeah, come on, <laughs> Can't they? There's got to be some way they well, got to test you, that at the front. What like, do you think they're going to They're going to go, huh. <laughs> they're not gonna do that. To oh yeah, Zibat. Okay, I'm not gonna do that to you, dude. Are you kidding me? Imagine they did. That. Yeah, dude. Be, that would be fucked up if the guy was walking in and went right over here. Oh, <laughs> Honestly, I would have fought it. I'd be like, oh, you should fucking tap like that. No, nah, please that is play so a fucking crazy. song for us. Please, what? take Jacob, us out with Jacob, anything. What do you think we should put? I've had the nicest time, by the way. Well, I have I'm too. really fucking enjoying myself. Me too. I, 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 if we didn't you, have another show, I wouldn't rush us out. What do you think we should play, Jakey? Uh, Jakey, Jakey, Bo Bakey. Banana, nana, fo fakey. Fee, fi, fo fakey. Jakey. Um... <laughs> the fact that we uh, all yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we, the like, yeah, we had it to, love we, us. We all also had to finish it. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one's nobody, stuck. nobody. We're not quitters it. here. Like, no, what? Everybody. There oh, was a solid pause yeah. where we could have stopped. Like right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, um, we had to do it right. You um, do, um, what about Kelly song? Uh, yeah. Do you want to? You haven't even posted that one yet, though. Yeah, I have. You have? Do it. We want an exclusive. Do it. Do it. Do it. We'll do the R. Kelly song. The R. Kelly okay, song's good. Um, it dawned on me um, last week that R. Kelly had missed out on a couple opportunities to write a hit song. And so <laughs> so I um, I wrote one for him. Hey, that's so nice of you. What a giver. One time in my life, I met a girl. We went back to my place. We... Rolling around, she stopped the fun. 
She said right to my face, pee on me. <laughs> I'm into that one less you. Just ate asparagus and I said fine, but we're on my bed. We'll have to find another place if you want to <laughs> get peed on. She just walked to yes! the bathtub yes! and lay it on down. I'm ready. <laughs> I want to get peed on. And I got a little stage fright. Yeah, nothing, nothing came out. <laughs> it's hard to pee when a stranger is staring at you. <laughs> pee on me. I feel the power of your golden shower. <laughs> I'm ready to get peed on And I said okay But it's hard to pee on someone else <laughs> When you have got A full erection <laughs> That's all I got <laughs> Oh my god That's amazing We're writing immediately We listen Immediately And we can do an original We can do we a do parody We do We're the bosses here We could do We could do a parody we could do... Oh. We could do so much shit. Yeah. Okay, first of all, I'm obsessed with both of you. Please, I know that you um, are crazy busy on the road, but you're welcome here anytime. It's so funny. It hurts. I love you guys. Thank and Beth you. is Thank so fully invited us. as well. Uh, please check out my guys at Kimmel's Club yep. this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday and every Monday. And every Monday. And our podcast, we do a podcast called Hey Man. Yep, with three A's. And where we... Man, it it is a uh, we touch on everything. Some are serious, like this week uh, we had a whole talk about therapy and why he isn't gonna go to therapy, even though I think he should should. Um, but and we talk about parenting stuff. We really get into some nitty gritty, but we also talk about silly shit. Like it's just a a. a if you like this relationship, you'll like the podcast. It was, yeah. very, it was very similar to, I think, what we did today. Like, yeah, it was you very... guys are great to watch. Do, yeah. do you feel like mm -hmm. I influenced you at all to go to therapy? Look, here's the thing. I know that therapy just, will be good for me. Yes. I, yeah. Well, yes. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you sure. Have to yeah. Just say yeah. yeah. Think thank you. Thank you. I think therapy thank would you. be great for me, but that Jewish guilt never stops, in. no matter what. <laughs> thank me. What's more powerful, Jewish guilt or Italian guilt? No, by sucks both sides. Catholic guilt. Catholic guilt is Jewish legit. Guilt. I literally do nothing wrong. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. My therapist was like, you have to stop saying I'm sorry. And I was like, I'm sorry. sorry yeah. Yeah. And she was like, yeah. stop. And I was like, I don't know what to do. It's built in. It it's is. Built it's in. Literally, yeah. I feel so guilty about nothing. I actually thought that, well, and then we'll really end it. I literally was like a virgin for such a long time because I was terrified of getting pregnant and getting having a child immediately that I used to take these pregnancy tests as a virgin because I felt guilty for even feeling sexual feelings. Like that's- Virgin, virgin Mary pregnancy? I was, I was say. like, I'm gonna get pregnant like the Virgin Mary. <laughs> I'm gonna be the one. That is, I feel now like the, the fucking fertility clinic. Yeah, yeah. Can you help me out. <laughs> that sounds like the definition of Catholic guilt. Yeah, that's yeah, going it. really oh well God. inside my mind. Probably need yeah. another academy treatment. So thank you guys. Thank I you. love you. Thank you for, thank you for having, having us. Yes. We really appreciate, appreciate you. And thank I'll you. see you this weekend. Okay. Yes. All right. Awesome. So Funny It Hurts is brought to you by Pacific West Injury Law. Got into an accident? Contact Pacific West Injury Law. Also, there's nothing better for your mental health than a great workout. And our episode is brought to you by Fit Club, the only place to be. It's so funny, it hurts.